What's up motivators, Taryn here. If you are just getting into swimming and you're finding it very difficult to breathe in the water, this self-diagnosis test is going to figure out what the cause of your breathing challenges is. And if you find that this test identifies why you are having a challenge breathing in the water, we're going to give you all the drills necessary to build the ability to have the foundation for swimming while you're in the water. Let's do it. When regular people want to do something personally amazing in an endurance event, they use motive training plans. Whether you're just getting started or you've done several events and want a little more structure to step up your game, we know what it takes to get amateurs to their goals, no matter how big or small. You can accomplish anything you want. You just need a plan designed for the unique needs of people with families, jobs, and a busy life. The motive training method is that plan to get you to the start line feeling confident and across the finish line feeling strong. When people learn to swim as adults, getting into triathlon or swim running or even just a fitness swim program, one of the hardest things that they have a difficult time with is learning how to breathe. It's almost completely backwards to what we think it needs to be. As opposed to running or cycling where we need to work hard, we need to work easy. As opposed to being upright, we're actually horizontal. As opposed to having zero pressure on the outside of our body, we all of a sudden have lots of pressure from all of the water on the outside of our body. It's almost completely backwards to how our brain is wired, which is why it's so difficult to just perform the simple act of breathing. One of the main reasons that it's so difficult to breathe is because the cure for breathing is opposite to what we think it is. As opposed to bringing in more air, we really need less air and we need to breathe out more. If that sounds ridiculous to you, let's try a test that you can perform at home just lying on the couch right now to see if your breathing problems are what you think it is. What I want you to do is lie down on the couch and perform a breathing pattern where you are breathing in a lot of air for four seconds and then only breathing out for one second. The pattern should feel as follows. Breathe in for one, two, three, four. Breathe out for one. Breathe in for one, two, three, four. Breathe out for one. Breathe in for one, two, three, four. Breathe out for one. Breathe in for one, two, three, four. Breathe out for one. What this breathing pattern is doing is it's building up more oxygen and more carbon dioxide in your chest, creating a lot of tightness. You're building up more than you're able to actually expel. If you try this for 30 to 60 seconds, you're probably going to feel the same sort of sensations as what you're feeling in the swim. You're going to feel very tight in your chest. You're going to feel maybe a little bit panicky. You're going to feel a little bit out of breath. You're going to have a lot of signals saying that you need to actually breathe more because you're not getting enough oxygen. Now I want you to try the opposite breathing pattern of breathing out for a count of four and then only in for a count of one. So breathe out, one, two, three, four. Breathe in for one. Breathe out for one, two, three, four. Breathe in for one. Breathe out for one, two, three, four. Breathe in for one. Breathe out for one, two, three, four. Breathe in for one. This should feel much more calming than the first breathing pattern because you're not building up a ton of carbon dioxide in your chest. All of that tightness is gone. This breathing pattern is actually more relaxing and it's really what you should be doing in the water. So what we need to develop when you're swimming in the water is the automatic response that when your face goes in the water, you breathe out really, really forcefully. You get rid of all of the oxygen and all of the built up carbon dioxide that is going to cause all of that tightness in your chest. And then when you turn your head to breathe, you're taking a small little sip of oxygen as opposed to a really big gulp that is going to be too much for your body to actually get rid of when your face is in the water. So let's start going through the drill sequence that you need to do to build the foundation for your breathing in the water. The first drill is just standing with your hands on the edge of the pool deck and constantly put your face into the water, blowing out very, very forcefully. And you want to do so in a very calm way. To stay calm, humming helps or singing a song helps. 
do this over and over and over until you can stick your face in the water, breathe out really forcefully until the point that you are completely out of oxygen and you don't feel panic doing so. The next drill that you need to do is to pair this same hands on the wall drill, stick your face in the water and breathe out forcefully and then gently kick your feet up off the bottom of the pool, gently kicking as you're breathing out forcefully. Use the same techniques of breathing out really, really forcefully, but nice and calmly that you used while standing on the edge of the pool deck. Once you can do this without feeling panicked at all and you're able to float nicely at the surface of the water by kicking very gently, then you can move to the next drill, which is doing the same drill, but then taking one hand off the edge of the pool deck and then turning to breathe whenever you need to breathe. So you need to focus on humming or breathing out very, very forcefully. You might need to have a big whoosh of air right before you take that breath to get rid of any last little bit of air before you take the breath. And then if you've done the breathing out forcefully correctly, your lungs should be basically a vacuum so that when you turn your head to breathe, all you need to do is open your mouth and the appropriate amount of air will come in. Once you can do this without a feeling of panic, without a feeling of a tight chest, and without a feeling of sinking, then we want to get very, very comfortable being in the water and being okay with being submerged in the water and not having oxygen immediately. The next drill that you would use to do this is sink downs. And what you'll do in sink downs is just go into the water and start breathing out really, really forcefully until you start sinking. What's going to happen is you're going to be bobbing up close to the surface of the water because there's so much air in your lungs that you'll be quite buoyant. To get yourself to actually start sinking down, you will have to learn how to breathe out very, very forcefully. Do so until you start sinking down and do this over and over and over until you can sink down without feeling panicked, get yourself into a point that you are completely out of oxygen and then bounce yourself back up. Do this over and over to reduce the sense of panic and you can do this safely starting in the shallow end, sinking down only about six inches to a foot and then gradually progress into the deep end where you can do this actually sinking down quite a number of feet. The final drill to get comfortable being submerged under the surface of the water and not being able to breathe exactly in the pattern that you want is the corkscrew drill. Put on a set of fins, put your arms overhead and then kick your way across the surface of the pool, flipping over every few seconds. What's going to happen is you're going to have to breathe out a lot when your face is under the surface of the water and then when you flip over you're going to be submerged a little bit and it might take a second or two before you actually come out of the water and are able to breathe. This is going to teach your body that it's okay to be submerged and not be able to breathe whenever you want. The key to this is to breathe out very forcefully, very calmly, and not freak out. Do this over and over and over until you can stay nice and calm at that point where you flip over onto your back and have to wait a second or two before you actually surface and can catch that breath. Swimming might seem hopeless for a lot of people, but I can assure you if you patiently go through these drills, and it might take three to six weeks to actually get comfortable with all of these drills, but if you do and you stay patient, repeating these drills through three or four times a week, your body is just going to become very comfortable with this breathing pattern with being submerged in the water. We've had upwards of 20,000 people use this drill sequence that is laid out in our book Triathlon Swimming Foundations that is rated as one of the highest triathlon swimming books in the world because this process of reprogramming the breathing pattern works so well for so many people. If you wanna dive a little bit more into beginner swim breathing, click the video that is on the screen right now. That is one of our most popular videos of all time for the three best tips for beginner swimmers. Later motivators.